my beautiful bookish friends, I'm Bowen and welcome to my April wrap up. In the entire month of April, I participated in G from Book Roast's readathon, which is the Aurelium readathon. I participated in it last year and I had a really good time doing that, so I wanted to participate in it this year as well. If you haven't seen my TBR video, I will link that down in the description below of how I planned for this month to go. It didn't quite go according to plan, but I did still complete every single class, so I'm very proud of myself for that one. I will also let you know which book I read for which class. I did read a total of 16 books in April. 14 of those were for the Aurelium readathon. I did try and read one for a quest. I kind of messed up a little bit because I started on the second quest and I completely missed out the first one. It was too late in the month to read a book for the first prompt. So I just didn't say I completed the quest at all, but I did just read two extra books. But with that being said, let's get into all of the books that I read in the month of April. The first book I read in the month of April was Sword Heart by T. Kingfisher. I read this one for the Animal Studies prompt, where the prompt was to flip a coin. If it's heads, it's non-fiction. If it's tails, it's fiction. I gave this book five stars. I am stingy as shit with my five stars. The only other five star I've given this year is a reread, so it doesn't really count. So this is the first true five star I've given out this year. I love this book so fucking much. It's very Princess Bride kind of thing, like it's adventure, it's romance, but oh my god, I was not expecting it to be this funny. It is pure fucking comedy. I listened to this book on audio and I listened to it in one day. I spent the entire day just laughing my absolute ass off. Like it was so funny and so sweet and so swoon worthy. I just am obsessed with this book. I finished it a month ago. I already want to reread it. I could reread this back to back four times and I would not get bored of it at all. I don't get that feeling very often at all. It normally takes me about a year or so for me to want to pick up a book again. I want to reread it. This one, I, I want to reread it immediately. That is a tempting thought, actually. I'm not going to because my TBR is immense, but know that I very much could. I, I love this book. I love this book so much. I am going to purchase a physical copy of it eventually, soon. It's probably going to be my favourite of the year. The next book I read this month was That Time I Got Drunk and Yeeted a Love Potion at a Werewolf by Kimberly Lemming. I read this one for the law prompt, which is a book with a map. I was originally going to read this book for Shapeshifting, which is Wolf in the title, on the cover, or in the author's name. But I didn't realise that this book had a map in it. So I did end up using it for law instead. I gave this book a three spice rating and I rated it a 4.25. It just didn't quite have the adventure that the first one had, but I do really like the relationship dynamic between our two main characters. I love me a good werewolf romance. I love me a good shifter romance, but the amount of times that the werewolf character is just such an alpha asshole. So seeing Felix in this book just be such a sweet, gold retriever poppy it was just such a sweet warm change of pace and i really really loved that i think this book just missed out on the plot that the first one did the first one had the plot running all the way through it the plot in this book didn't really kick in until about the 70 percent mark and i'd love for it to have been a bit more action and adventure but overall i really did enjoy this book and i do love this series so much the next book I read this month was Punderworld Volume 1 by Linda Sedgwick. I read this book for Inscription, which is a book from my top shelf. Now this book is a Hades and Persephone retelling and all of my Greek mythology is on the top shelf just here. I gave this book a 3.25 rating. The artwork was good, it's just not my personal style, but I just thought the story was kind of dull. The timeline seemed to be really jarring because it had the flashbacks and then it had current day, but they never really flowed together very well. I just couldn't help but compare this Hades and Persephone retelling to Laura Olympus, which in my personal opinion is just done so much better. I didn't really vibe with this one as much, but like, it's not bad, it's just not for me. The next book I read this month was Things We Hide From The Light by Lucy Score. I read this book for Elemental Studies, which is Flowers On The Cover. This book was one of my most anticipated of this year, so considering I only gave it a 3.25 rating, I loved the first book in the series, 
but I was so disappointed in this one. I didn't really like either of the characters in this book. This book deals a lot with Nash's depression, but the way he deals with it isn't done very well. I like the discussions about it, but his depression manifests as feeling numb and Lena, our female lead, makes him feel something. So he latches onto that instead of, I don't know, going to therapy and taking his meds. I just feel like they both needed to do a lot of work on themselves before they even contemplated getting into a relationship. At almost 600 pages, this book was just way too long. The plot didn't really kick in until the end. And I'm just, I'm just a little disappointed in this one. The next book I read this month was Tempting or Zed by Victoria Avelyn. I read this book for astronomy, which is two E's in the title. I gave this book a 4.5 and a two chili pepper rating. I really, really love this series. I think Victoria Avelyn is such an underrated author. If you like Ice Planet Barbarians at all, you will love this series. It's so good. This book follows Orzed and Alex. Alex is one of the runaways from book three and Orzed is the grumpy soldier guard and I love their dynamic together. This is one of those books that has me kicking my feet and giggling like a little girl. It's so sweet and I love their relationship dynamic as well. The third act breakup even makes a lot of sense to me, but the way that it all comes together in the end, I absolutely adore this book. I adore this series. I will continue reading these books as long as she puts them out. She could do a 19 book series like the Ice Planet Barbarians and I would read every single one. The next book I read this month was Fever Claim by Marie Johnston. I read this book for shapeshifting and that's a book with wolf in the title, on the cover or in the author's name. I rated this book 3.5 and I gave it a two spice rating as well. This book didn't really focus on the relationship so much as it did the plot. This was incredibly plot heavy and set up for the rest of the books in this series which is not really what I was hoping for or what I was expecting. And because the romance took a back seat, it was really underdeveloped, especially with our main character, Jace. It was a lot of telling and not showing. Like this book was fine, but it wasn't really what I was expecting going into it and not in a good way. The next book I read this month was Jade Fire Gold by June C.L. Tan. I read this book for alchemy, which is metal in the title. I gave this book a three star rating. It seemed very generic in the sense that it feels like a lot of other YA fantasies that I've read before. I was enjoying it in the beginning, but by the middle, I just lost interest and didn't really care anymore. The relationship in this as well was a bit weird and it didn't really work. Even the I love you part, he comes out with the I love you and she responds with I know. I have done this in real life and it's when I wasn't interested in this person and I didn't really know what to say. It just feels awkward and I can tell you that from real life experience. So didn't really vibe with this one which is a shame because I was really looking forward to it but they can't all be winners. The next book I read this month was Too Hot to Handle by Tessa Bailey. This is for psionics and divination and the prompt was clouds on the cover. I gave this book a 3.75 and I gave it a three spice rating. I really did enjoy this, but as it turns out, I didn't realize, but I've actually read this story before. It's on an app called Chapters, which is a story-based choose your own adventure game. And this exact story is on there and I've already played it. So I've actually already read this before in a different format, but that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy this book because I really did. Jesper in this was the reformed playboy who's been over-sexualized, very much like Fox in Hook, Line and Sinker, which is also by Tessa Bailey. And Rita was our cynic, grumpy, pessimistic kind of character. But I really do enjoy their dynamic. It was very much more sexual tension than emotional connection, which normally really bothers me. But for some reason, this just works for me. I can't even tell you why but I had a good time reading this. I really enjoyed this one and I can't wait to get to the rest of the books in this series. The next book I read this month was The Happy Ever After Playlist by Abby Jimenez. I read this book for Demonology, which is a book recommended based on your favorite. This book starts when Sloane almost hits a dog with her car and uh, she takes the dog and she calls the owner whose number is on the tag of the dog. 
and they start up a text message conversation and she agrees to keep the dog while the owner, Jason, is still away on a work trip for the next two weeks. This book I ended up giving a 1.5 rating. I really was enjoying it for like the first 60 pages before they met in person. Once they met in person, I absolutely couldn't stand this book. I gave it a one spice rating. It was there, but like it's completely inconsequential. It's just such insta love. It's not even insta love, it's insta obsession. The miscommunication was absolutely ridiculous. The way that they didn't have any self-preservation and no regards to their own personal safety was just so fucking stupid. You really do have to suspend so much of your disbelief for this book. I feel like if this book was a thriller, it would have done so well. But the fact that it was a romance gave me severe amounts of ick. I just, I did not vibe with this book at all. Both of these characters really annoyed me and it's just, this was not my vibe. The next book I read this month was Gargoyles Captive by Katie Robert. I read this book for Restoration, which was Shuffle and Point. I gave this book a 3.5 rating because it kind of confused me. The romance aspect of this book wraps up really well and that was really well done and I very much enjoyed that. I gave it a 4 spice rating because I did enjoy how the human was the dom and the gargoyle was the submissive and that was an interesting change in dynamic and the way that wrapped up was all very nice, tidy, neat little bow. I just chose to ignore the whole I love you thing at the end because it was too insular for me. But then there was the plot and the whole political plot line and everything that just seemed to stop halfway through the plot and I don't understand why it's there if it's not going to get finished. Maybe it'll get resolved in the next book but somehow I highly doubt that. It just felt really unfinished on the plot. The next two books I'm going to be talking about in tandem and that is Spy Family Volume 4. This one I did read for Artificery which is start a book with a snack. I also read Spy Family Volume 5 but I didn't count this for any prompts because I'd already completed the entire syllabus by the time I read this. I gave volume four a 4.75 rating. I really loved the entire family and them getting a dog and their little adventure in that and what they ended up calling the dog, which I'm not gonna spoil, made me absolutely start giggling. I loved that so much. I adore this series. However, I did give volume 5 a 3.25 star. Volume 5 didn't flow as well as the rest of them have. It seemed to be more like vignettes and it didn't really have a linear feel to it. I don't know if we're supposed to like Yuri, but he gives very strong incest vibes and it makes me feel icky and I wasn't that much of a fan of Agent Nightfall either and I'm kind of nervous as to where the series is going to go now but I am going to keep reading it because I do love these books and I can't wait to find out more about what's going to happen to our Voyager family. The next book I read this month was Cinderella is Dead for Spells and Incantations which is a book between 389 and 415 pages. I gave this book a 4.25. I love a good fuck the patriarchy kind of story. And this is exactly that. In this world, the king hosts an annual ball for all of the young ladies. It's absolutely mandatory that they attend so they could be chosen by the men. And these men treat them incredibly poorly. It's kind of in the same vein of Cinderella who actually was a real character in these stories and did exist in this world. Our main character, Sophia, one, isn't interested in men at all anyway. And two, isn't interested in being part of this king's world where men treat women like absolute shit and she's gonna set out to do something about it. I adore this book. It is so fast paced and just such a good time. The next book I read this month was If Only You by Chloe Lise. I read this book for Art of Illusion which was match your clothes to the colour of the book. This is book six in the Bergman Brothers series. I gave this book four stars. It's Ziggy's story technically because she's the Bergman sister that this one focuses on but it's more Sebastian's story and how He's the perceived bad boy and everything that he's been through and how he wants to change and grow and be better and he actually does the work and he wants to be better for Ziggy and I adore him. He is so sweet. 
I only gave it a one spice rating because there's only one scene and it's right at the very end and it's not necessarily closed door but it's not in the room if that makes sense it could have been done a little bit better in my personal opinion but it was just so sweet and so cute and I love this book I love this entire series I think everyone should read the series because it's just so sweet and so wholesome and I love it. The last class I had to complete was for Conjuration which is a book recommended by a friend and for this I read A Not So Meet Cute by Megan Quinn. This book was very kindly gifted to me by one of my friends who gave it five stars. I however only gave it a 3.75. This book definitely lives up to its title. I was not enjoying either of these characters at the start of this book. I just felt like the characters made really stupid decisions. You know what? They didn't really grow on me either. And I'm a character-driven person and it's a romance book. So in a romance book, I definitely do need to like the characters to enjoy it most of the time. But this is the exception to that rule. I gave it a three spice rating because that part was really fun. I did really enjoy this book, even though I didn't like the characters, which is confusing for my brain. It also reminded me of the Dreamland Billionaire series, which also has three hot brothers that are billionaires with the last name Kane. So there must be something about the last name Kane that means that they are very very hot and they have a lot of money i'm not mad about it <laughs> while i wasn't enjoying this at the start i am very excited to pick up the rest of the books in this series the last book i picked up this month was yearning for her by tiffany roberts i gave this book a 1.75 i gave it a three spice rating but the main reason that i rated it so low was the lack of consent it was questionable at best, non-existent at worst. It just really, really bothered me. And our main character doesn't even have his epiphany that what he has been doing is wrong until like 60% of the way through this book. It just made me feel really, really icky. And I just, I don't like this at all. I was really looking forward to picking up another book by this author duo. But I think that this one's left such a bad taste in my mouth that I don't want to pick that one up anymore. And that's all the books that I read in the month of April. If you got this far into the video, then leave a flower emoji in the comments down below. But for now, thank you so much for stopping by. It's been lovely having you and I hope to see you in another video coming very soon. Bye.